Hello, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It is Tuesday, the 4th of December, 2007. The market's closed and sellers were out once again today as the S&P 500 pulled back $1.14 or 0.78%. And you can see here that the last couple of days, this selling has occurred on diminishing volume. It looks like I've still got my uh, Fibonacci on there, but um, here, here's what I was trying to do is draw down here. Uh, but you can see that the volume has diminished and that typically is a sign that maybe the sellers just aren't that aggressive in here and perhaps it can turn but bearishly we have a declining 50-day moving average and usually the market will resolve itself to the downside but not always as we saw over here that the market can make it back above there i've been making a case that potentially we're going to make another inverted head and shoulders pattern now you can see that the right shoulder is starting to take its formation and if it can find some support in here, suck in some shorts on this low volume pullback, then there is the potential still for a year end rally. And that's one of the things that makes it a little bit confusing too, is this is a very bullish time of year typically. It doesn't mean the market has to go up, but historically it is uh, a bullish time of year. So again, we've got a lot of cross currents in this market, and I still believe that it's a uh, best trade, you know, best way to approach this market is to continue to just do it very aggressively and the day trades are the best way to go about it. Um, and, and if you've got a strong group like the solar stocks today, then you know who cares about the market, just trade those things. Um, the S&P 500 here, if we look at the Fibonacci from the lows just before Thanksgiving to the, uh, the recent high after that gap higher last week, you can see that the market hasn't even retraced 38.2% of that. It also holds above the 146 level that I thought was going to be some support and 145. So it's not all that bad looking here on a, a short term time frame. The five day moving average may be starting to flatten out, but if it can get back above this level now, I think the key level for, for now is probably about 147.50. If the market can get above that and hold above it for a half hour or so, then I think you can see the shorts get squeezed and we can start to take some of these higher levels out. The 30-minute, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the 60-minute time frame is where we can best see this uh, inverted head, head and shoulders pattern. Now you can see that I was early anticipating that, uh, but um, you can st see that it's starting to take its formation in here, and uh, there's you know just too much um, uh, uncertainty to really take a firm stance in either direction. What would really get this market bullish in the short term would be a move back above that neckline if it continues to build this right shoulder. So that continues to develop. This daily time frame continues to develop. It's weak. We've got the 50-day moving average heading lower. We've got the market trap below the 200-day moving average. We've got an advancing 10-day moving average. So just a lot of confusion amongst the uh, trend on multiple time frames. And when that is the case, it means go slow. If you're, if you're not an aggressive trader, go very slow. Or if you are an aggressive trader, there's just some fantastic opportunities on the long and short side. If you look at the uh, daily VWAP in here on the S&P 500, just kind of a, a mess back and forth choppy action in here today. But ultimately, it did finish with about three quarters of a percent loss, and it did so on lighter volume. So just uh, continue to go slow is, is the uh, best way to look at it. And, uh, you know, it's a day trader's environment. The... Um, Semiconductors were down again, and they've been unable to clear any levels of short-term resistance. Uh, I think that the uh, if this market has the potential to move higher, again, it's going to take a move past this 418 level or so, where we've seen uh, this, this prior support from last week turn into resistance this week. There's nothing bullish on this chart on any time frames. We've got the five-day moving average heading lower again. It's going to take a surprise to turn the semiconductors. Well, I don't know what that surprise would be. I don't know if there's earnings due or whatever, but it's going to take something uh, that the market wasn't anticipating. The IWM, Russell 2000, uh, you know, this, this is more reason for concern and, and reason for concern in an overall mixed picture. But the, the IWM has been leading this market higher and lower. So when you look at the daily time frame, you can see that it did lose just about 1% today with its 73 cent loss. It's back down to the 10 day moving average and there's really not much bullishness you can point to here. We've got most, uh, most importantly is we've got lower highs and 
now if it can make a higher low then maybe it can turn around a little bit but odds just do not favor it with a declining 50 and 200 day moving average so uh, perhaps short term it can find a little bit of support in here maybe we get some seasonal strength but the bigger picture is still very negative it's now down to that important 75 level uh, it's got resistance once again the the important level of resistance this market's going to have to clear before you have any chance of, of seeing a sustainable rally is up at that 7580 level and now we've got the uh, the problem of a declining five day moving average as well so uh, odds look like further downside maybe it's finding support at 61.8 percent and if I sound indecisive it's because I'm looking at this thing and it just looks like a big giant mess to me and I look at it and think this is why I'm a day trader in this environment there's really not much advantage to holding stocks longer than a day or two in here I think um, because what can turn this I I don't know I don't see it I don't see it in a one minute time frame looking weak again in here you could even point to this uh, uh, one minute time frame and say that uh, here's a shoulder ahead and a shoulder and then the, you know basically VWAP was the neckline it broke below that and maybe that indicates uh, another 60 cents lower down to 74.40 um, from this level if, if it gets down to 74.40 then it closes the gap and then we've got the 73 level below that and if 73 gives then Again, we've got a much bigger mess on our hands. Let's not worry about that yet because it's just not clear. Um, the NASDAQ 100, this market, again, we found resistance at the uh, five day, or I'm sorry, the 50 day moving average, which also coincided with this prior level of support acting as resistance. And it also was, once again, I'll just point to this, the uh, uh, retracement of the, uh, of the latest leg lower, which is, it, it barely made it up to that 61.8% level. Now it's heading back down again, and uh, you know we've got uh, we've got lower highs and lower lows. We've got the potential of maybe 50 acting as support, uh, but that's only potential support. It isn't support until it goes down there, tests it, and and bounces higher from it. All these moving averages are heading lower. That indicates there's further downside likely. Let's take a look at some of these uh, leading stocks like Research in Motion. Um, Research in Motion continues to break down. It broke down hard from uh, a, uh, a retracement move off that 50-day moving average. You can see that it got up to that 61.8% gapped above it. And now we're coming right back down to these lows in, re in Research in Motion. And Research in Motion, again, I'm going to point to this saying that it kind of had been uh, the, the pattern that uh, led uh, Google higher. And by that, I'll show you what I mean, is that we had seen Google, um, you know, break, uh, break higher after this divergence. Uh, it broke past some resistance in here. And uh, this was the level. This, this resistance became support. It's been holding that five-day moving average in this trend line. Those have both broken. Now we've got this stock kind of just going sideways in here. Again, I think it's going to take a move below 660 before it really uh, heads lower. But uh, it's it's just it's again it's indecisive. So keep your eyes on things that are moving. Solar Fun, LDK. Um, here's a stock that hasn't gone yet. It's got a big short position. It's got a great name, Evergreen Solar ESLR. You can see it had this big rally here. It was based on earnings. It consolidated. It looks like it might have some potential for resistance up near 14, but you can also make the case that that's uh, building a shoulder for a break above that. Um, longer term, it's got a very nice looking bullish uh, weekly time frame, and uh, you can see that it's starting to uh, find some support along this rising five-day moving average. I think you want to watch the stock tomorrow, probably above 1350. Uh, you might be able to see a move of you know this would suggest maybe a dollar if it gets above that fourteen dollar level though then I think that uh, 17 I think it's 17 million shares the 17 million shares short this stock might regret it like they did in Hoku today as well like they did in LDK these are all solar plays and they, they're not, the, not necessarily the best looking stocks out there but this is still a very bullish looking uh, chart keep your eye on this one tomorrow I am long some of the stock and I am long some calls as well